T. Scott Jones, the Banks and Jones, joins us now. Look at this guy with his power T hat on. You're ready for Nico time, aren't you? Absolutely. I tell you what, you know, I mean, earlier the better. Let's see what the young man can do, and let's go pull a big win for the Vols. Yep, I think it's got the excitement up. So we wanted to have you on about this uh, uh, Florida State and ACC getting involved in a legal battle as to the future of both that program and that conference. Can you give us kind of a big picture view of how this uh, sport can find its way into a legal setting? Well, you know, basically when a football team, a program uh, such as, uh, you know, what we're dealing with here enters into an agreement with a conference, that's a contract. And, you know, we talk about the media rights and everything else, because let's face it, I mean, that's great, great revenues, uh, gate revenues are, are wonderful, but the big money is in all the media. And so they've got contracts with ESPN, and they have, if you will, per conference member payouts associated with that. So as I understand, they've been a member for approximately 30 years. Uh, they just basically had a double down and entered into an agreement uh, with the conference. And so they're going to be repercussions for uh, breaking that. You know, I mean, it is going to be a painful check writing, I think, on the uh, part of the university in order to break that contract. I don't think there's going to be just a, hey, you know what, you guys go on your way type situation. And I think they know that. I think their allegations with regards to uh, the ACC's failure to fulfill uh, fall or, or going to fall somewhat on deaf ears. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's where I kind of wanted to go with it because Florida state is citing that they are saying they were, that there was a level of coercion into the grant of rights agreement in 2013, I believe was when it was signed. I don't know what proof they have of that or if there is any. And also in these situations with teams and conferences, can it be considered a breach of contract if the conference says they're going to look out for you and then they do they make a lot of missteps that clearly does not look out for the best interests of their teams in the conference when they fall so significantly behind the SEC and the Big 10 can you can you call that a breach of contract in in court I think you can, and I think you're going to see an attempt by FSU to do that, to say basically the ACC did not perform up to expectations. But then again, I mean, you're comparing yourself to the SEC. And I mean, you know, albeit obviously I'm a big all-sport fan, but I mean, the SEC has been the ringleader for a long time. So, you know, it's tough to catch up to the GOAT. But that being said, I, I don't know. I mean, what is going to be considered substantive performance? I mean, uh, you know, the ACC uh, has to, in my opinion, done a reasonable job. Has it fell such that it falls below expectations? I don't know. I mean, I see that sort of, you know, litigated out in the court of law, and you got to realize a judge is going to look at it, and they're going to make a determination about what the conference did, and they're going to look at it from a reasonable man or reasonable woman standard as opposed to just a standard of basically FSU's whine about the situation. Yeah, and you have to love the powers that be like the NCAA and bowl committees and such that say uh, they, they take as much of their time as they want to. But then they kind of put Florida State in this position with whether or not they should have made the playoff. I, I just wonder what they can get out of this, even if they were to win big in court tomorrow. I mean, what can they what can they gain here? I don't know that they really gain much of anything. And I mean, honestly, I think it's more of a loss of credibility. I think, you know, if you want to leave a conference, you leave in a conference in the appropriate way. I mean, I think it was a 240% buyout. I mean, the last that I read relative to what they were going to have to do as far as revenues. So it's going to be expensive, but there's a right way and a wrong way trying to litigate your way out of it. I don't know is necessarily uh, the best course. I mean, you know, frankly, being an attorney, obviously, you know, the attorneys are going to make some money out of it. It's going to be ugly in court. There are going to be a lot of allegations thrown uh, back and forth. And I guess you're going to basically see what equates to a high dollar divorce, but it's, it's going to be a university and a conference divorcing. So um, let's uh, think about this from a breach of contract standpoint. One of the things I just wanted to bring up Florida State cited was the ACC, the coercion under the grant of rights, and the fact that they gave ESPN, I will say this is the worst deal I think I've ever seen in sports, where they had that contract with ESPN through 2036, but allowed ESPN to opt out in 2027 if they wanted to. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, doesn't Florida State somewhat have an argument at that point to say, well, you guys did, yes, you may not have had to get the SEC deal, 
but that's one of the worst deals in television broadcasting rights history that they signed. And couldn't they at least make that argument to a certain to a judge? I think they can, but I mean, again, you know, is it a you know, just because you enter into a bad agreement, is that a breach of contract? You know, I mean, honestly, I hate to sit there and say it. You know, I learned a long time ago. We had a chancellor in Knox County, and she said, you know, there's no law against being stupid. So that being said, I mean, I hate to sit there and say that, and I'm not intimating that whoever entered into that agreement. But, you know, today's dollars, they may not look so rosy on down the road. And so uh, when you have that type of a uh, situation and somebody enters into that type of agreement, you know, I mean, was that not just kudos for ESPN and uh, booze for FSU and for the ACC? I mean, I, at some point in time, I mean, you have two adults, i.e., albeit their entities, uh, with equal bargaining power, and they bargain and they make a bad deal. I mean, they knew that a long time ago when that deal was done with uh, ESPN, and only now when it becomes relevant when they have this uh, fabulous season – uh, do they sort of whine about it? I mean, they've enjoyed sort of being the big dog in the conference in a conference that has basically devolved into what, you know, I mean, I hate to sit there and, you know, bust them, but, I mean, they've become mid-major. No, uh, yeah. you're exactly right. Uh, T. Scott Jones with uh, Banks and Jones. Uh, can, can you tell us uh, what makes you guys different? I know because I've had a chance to visit with you guys when it comes to uh, personal liability or criminal defense. You guys absolutely go the extra mile and you go to trial, which a lot of attorneys don't do. Well, I mean, I think that's sort of the key. I mean, the reality of it is we're always here. We're always working. I mean, you know, albeit this is sort of the break between Christmas and New Year's. I mean, we always try to be responsive, answer the phone, respond to our clients' uh, needs and inquiries because it just doesn't always happen Monday through Friday, nine to five. And you got to be there for folks. And if you have a reputation that you will take these matters to trial, you're going to get a substantively better recovery, i.e. if it's a, a contract case or something of that nature or a personal injury case or in a criminal defense type situation. I mean, you know, you don't have to always be in there, you know, if you will, hat in hand offering, uh, you know, hey, what will you give me? So, I mean, we try to basically be in a position where it's not necessarily aggressive or it's ugly aggressive, but we're ready to go to trial if necessary. Awesome stuff. I know that you're with the family uh, over this holiday. Merry Christmas to you. We certainly appreciate you, Mr. Jones, and have a safe trip and enjoy the fam. All right. Merry Christmas from the Dominican. Take Merry care. Merry Christmas. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate it. Look at that guy. They go fast. You got to enjoy that time with the family. You certainly do. All right. So your thoughts on where this ends up, Caleb, with uh, Florida State and, and the ACC. I think that at the end, it's not necessarily about where Florida State wants to go. It's where they don't want to be. It's exactly where, what it is. It's where they they don't want to be in the ACC. They're taking a leap that the SEC or the Big Ten would come calling if they left. Now, you and I know Florida would fight tooth and nail every turn for them to try to get in the SEC, but I think the rest of the conference, the school would still be behind it. It's not like Texas A&M had any power to stop Texas getting into the SEC. So I, I think that... Here's what's here's what's key on this, Dave. Um, there are Florida and North Carolina because you know Florida State's headquartered in Florida. The ACC is headquartered in North Carolina. They're both suing. Where is this case going to be? Is it going to be in Florida or is it going to be in North Carolina? I mean, that's a big deal, and they you know you know they obviously want to get it in their different spots. But both states have non-compete clauses, which is to say, within those non-compete clauses, you can't. You can't be forced to honor a contract if it limits trade to a certain degree. So, like, could Florida State say us honoring this contract with the ACC is limiting trade in Florida because it's it's minimizing our revenue potential by going to the SEC or wherever? They might be able to say that. What they could also say is that, look, Dave, let's be honest. Greg Sinke wasn't he out like in the beginning of November screaming that the SEC champion should get into the playoff no matter what? Yes. Well, he, the he was screaming that no matter. He was screaming that somebody needs to get in there, even if it's yes, yes, the winner of the, the SEC a championship. Did game you hear it? Would be the SEC champion, but wouldn't be the favorite. Yes, right. Did you hear ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips say one word on behalf of Florida State the whole time? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Wouldn't think he would. He would. Well, this is Florida State's argument. The ACC said that they would like go part of their contract is they would do everything within their power to look out for the schools. 
Well, if Jim Phillips is not saying a word on behalf of Florida State and Greg Sinke is saying everything, to, he's screaming everything he can on behalf of his programs, you can make a legitimate argument that Jim Phillips is not doing what he can do on behalf of Florida State. And then on top of that, they could maybe, uh, they, now this wasn't in the lawsuit, but they could also maybe use the argument that, I don't know if you saw this, they basically said that by adding FSU, Cal, and Stanford, they hurt the competitive balance of, of uh, the ACC which is a breach of contracts because they basically said those schools suck. <laughs>